What's up, everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I have a very special guest who's going to tell us all about the field of vascular cardiology and tell you some tips um, how you can achieve that goal as well. Uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Ashby. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, again, my name is Bernard Ashby. Bernard Ashby. I'm a vascular cardiologist. Um, I've been practicing uh, as a vascular cardiologist for about three and a half years now. Uh, it's been uh, a thrill. I love what I do. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer them. Awesome. And for the people who don't know what a uh, vascular cardiologist is, can you explain kind of what a cardiologist is and, and uh, what a vascular cardiologist is? I know a lot of people probably don't know what that is. Yeah, definitely. So I think most people know what a cardiologist is. And yeah. the name is uh, part of, I mean, the, the meaning is part of the name cardio, which yeah. means heart. So uh, cardiologists basically deal with all forms of heart disease. And that can range from an elect electrical issue, like an arrhythmia, yeah. or a pump issue, like heart failure. And so uh, we do the whole range. So um, we work closely with cardiothoracic surgeons and other uh, specialists, but essentially we do all things related to the heart. And whereas a vascular medicine specialist is, is essentially a glorified plumber, meaning that we focus on the pipes and uh, anything related to the veins, the arteries, or the lymphatic systems falls under that domain. And vascular medicine is a relatively new field within medicine. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, relatively rare to find a cardiologist that does both. Yeah. But I've been uh, lucky enough to train at institutions where they did exist and uh, was able to get some training in that particular area. So I'm one of the few vascular cardiologists that exist out there. Wow, that's awesome, man. Um, so to become a, just a general cardiologist, it requires four years of college, four years of medical school, mm -hmm. and they were between three to four years of internal medicine? Yeah, well, three years of internal medicine. Okay, and plus mm -hmm. additional three years mm -hmm. of cardiology training? Exactly. So, so yeah, so let, let's do the math. So four, so eight years between med school and undergrad. Okay. Wait, and then uh, three years of internal medicine residency and another three years. So that's, uh, what's that, 14 years? Um, and how many years to become a vascular cardiologist? And that's an additional year of training. Yes, year of training. Okay, cool, man. Your board certification in vascular medicine. Awesome. Uh, describe a typical day for you. It kind of starts at what time and kind of ends at what time? How, how do how do your days usually look? Well, I'm I'm very uh, different than most cardiologists. Uh -huh. I actually resigned from my attending job at Mount Sinai and, and Columbia University. So once upon a time, basically a few months ago, I was a academic uh, vascular cardiologist. Uh, my schedule then was pretty typical of most, most academics, meaning that I got up pretty early, uh, was in the office by 8 a.m., mm -hmm. and would leave the office sometime after 6 or 7 p.m., mm -hmm. and, and it would be, my days would, would, it, my days would be based on what I was doing. So I could either be in a clinic seeing patients or seeing patients in the hospital. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I would actually choose a hospital because uh, that's when I was most hands-on. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I would round with my uh, fellows, residents, med students, mm -hmm. be able to teach, uh, and also take care of patients who were pretty ill. Um, so we covered the patients on the floor in ICU, uh, CT ICU, uh, basically all cardi cardiology-related patients in the hospital. And so it's fun, you know, when you see a whole range of diseases and uh, you know complexities of. Um, you know conditions and so it's just uh it's just more action on the floors but um i still enjoy the clinic especially with the continuity of care but uh again my days would range between uh, a clinic schedule versus a on-call hospital schedule and that that would just be based on you know whatever i was scheduled for um but now i, t I decided to jump off the hamster wheel and i turned myself into an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and so what i do now actually is uh run a few businesses Mm -hmm. And I work part-time as a cardiologist, and I do locums tenants. So what that means is that I travel um, to other places, mm -hmm. and I work uh, on, at an hourly rate, at an hourly rate, rate and um, I see patients both in the clinic and in the hospital. 
but it's only for a small period of time. Gotcha. Um, and cardiology is it's procedural based. Can you describe some of the procedures or as a yeah. master cardiologist that you do? Yeah. So a lot of folks choose cardiology because it's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, you're an internist that does procedures and, uh, as a vascular cardiologist, I do relatively few procedures, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that uh, that's different. I'm different from an interventional cardiologist who does catheterizations, and and uh, basically they open up any pipe that's blocked, either in the coronary arteries or in the periphery, in the mostly in the lower extremities. Mm -hmm. um, they do a lot of um, opening of blocked arteries and femoral arteries and whatnot. Uh, what I do actually is I compliment them. And I stay away from the procedures for the most part, and I just focus on, on medicine. I do do a few procedures, such as the trans transesophageal echocardiogram. I put in swan gans catheters, um, temporary pacemakers, um, you know, central lines, A-lines, nothing too complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, technically, I could do um, angiograms, but... I leave those up to the experts since I'm, I do a relatively few amount and uh, that's not, not something I'm particularly interested in, to be honest. So uh, I'm just kind of focused on the medicine aspect of things for the most part. Yeah. And when I think of kind of busy uh, careers in medicine, cardiology is one of those ones that comes into mind. Uh, yeah. I believe cardiologists work a lot of hours. Is, is that necessarily yeah. true? Do you, when you were, uh, were you taking a lot of call and working a lot of hours? Yeah, I mean, well, becoming a cardiologist requires a lot of hours, a lot of, a lot of service uh, to the hospital, um, especially during your training time. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you do become a cardiologist, uh, you start at the bottom of the food chain, so to speak. And so you spend a lot of hours in the hospital on call because, you know, you're the low man on the totem pole. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, what, I, what I always uh, stress to people is that uh, if you have a, a business mind mm -hmm. um, and if you can think out of the box, you can really have any arrangement that you want, uh, meaning that you can see patients in the hospital or you can be a consultant and uh, consult with, uh, with industry or consult with medical legal cases. Um, uh, or you can uh, start your own business and simply do whatever you want. Um, you could do focus on imaging. You can focus on um, just uh, concierge. Um, uh, uh, lifestyles or, or management of patients with uh, who, who benefit from a concierge uh, physician. So there is a whole range of opportunities within the field of cardiology that you can exploit. Uh, you just have to have the entrepreneurial or, or an intrepid spirit to kind of venture out and, and do other things. Got you. And how's that transition been from a <clears throat> academic vascular cardiologist to being um, an entrepreneur? How's, how's that transition been for you? Uh, for me, it's been great. Yeah. Um, because I'm doing what I want to do gotcha. and, and no one's uh, dictating my agenda. I'm dictating my own agenda. Gotcha. So if I feel like I want to do research, I do research. If I feel okay. like I want to uh, just do an article about general cardiovascular issues, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I want to see patients, I can see patients. So I basically dictate my own agenda and my own schedule for the most part. And mm -hmm. so for me, that, that autonomy is, is uh, definitely beneficial and, and, and welcome. Um, the, you know, the transition away from constantly dealing with med students, residents and fellows, mm -hmm. I do miss that. Um, I love to teach. And so I, I still do mentoring on the side, but you know, the thing that, that would pull me back into academics is, is the teaching. I, I definitely enjoy that. And I, and I love imparting knowledge and enlightening, uh, young and, up, and, and upcoming, uh, cardiologists or even doctors uh, in general. Gotcha. And you mentioned locum tenens. Uh, for the, those who don't know what that is, can you just briefly explain what that is? And do you kind of just go to different locations and you're there for a couple of weeks and work and you just travel? It's kind of like a traveling physician. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. And so locum tenens, it can be, the, the setup can be however you want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, it's, it's, it's a staffing agency that acts as a middleman that finds um, hospitals that are in need of uh, physicians, mm -hmm. and then they connect physicians with those those institutions, and uh, they cover your travel, they cover your hotel, they cover your rental, and they just uh, basically facilitate things so that you're able to get to the hospital, work, and do your do what you need to do, and get home. Gotcha. And so um, you could do do it uh, the way I'm doing it, where you go.
for a week or two out of the month, or you could go for blocks of time. Some, sometimes doctors go for a six month stint um, on, a, on, a, on an assignment. Okay. And we mentioned the, the long number of years that it takes to become a cardiologist. Um, once you're done with all of your training, I know it varies by where you live, but how much can a cardiologist uh, generally make outside of your fellowship and training? Um, in terms of salary, like a normal salary? Well, I think on average, um, cardiologists make um, a pretty high salary. Mm -hmm. You're an orthopedic surgeon, right? Yeah. Yeah, so orthopedic surgeons are number one, and uh, uh, cardiologists are number two. And um, I think on average, it's around 500000 mm -hmm. for a cardiologist. But, uh, but again, there's a whole range, and it really depends on, on a lot of factors, such as the lifestyle that you're looking for, mm -hmm. how business-minded you are, and, um, and, you know, what your priorities are. So, um, uh, but cardiologists can make a lot of money, um, especially if you have a business mind. And uh, in my circumstance, uh, I, I make more money than I now, working less hours than I did as a full-time academic physician. Gotcha. Um, and what other advice would you have for people who are either pre-med students, future doctors, or the aspiring cardiologists? What, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, basically, you know, don't take no for an answer. Um, you're going to get a lot of no's um, in, in, your, in, your, in your lifetime, especially during, during your time of, of uh, training. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't accept no. Um, you know, the, just, just have the, the willpower and the, um, and the, the drive to, uh, to, to take L, so to speak. I mean, you're going to fail. But uh, you have to learn from those those experiences and, and bounce back and 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 always try and improve yourself. And trust me, no matter what level you're at, even if you're uh, a glorified attending, you're going, you're going to have setbacks. Things are not going to go right. And I think the ones that that have the breakthrough are not necessarily the ones that are most not necessarily the most brilliant, but the the ones that that just don't take no for an answer and, and they'll do anything that it takes to reach that goal. And, and so I definitely urge people to, to not get discouraged and, and just keep pushing forward. Yeah, that's really good to hear because most people think that once you become a doctor or once you become attending, that all your kind of um, failures <laughs> yeah. and all your struggles go away. But I think they actually probably just begin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just a new, a, a new batch of uh, issues that you have to deal with. And, and you just have to have a strong-minded, um, uh, I mean, you have to have a strong mentality. Gotcha. And uh, not everybody can, can deal with, with the pressures of being in position. Um, you just have a lot of different things that are um, uh, work not, not necessarily working against you, but you just have to have, you have to struggle with. I mean, especially when it comes to interpersonal relationships, especially when it comes to your patients. And so uh, you just have to have a strong mentality in order to you know do what we do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, three last questions for you. And I ask this to all everyone that I interview. Uh, you can just maybe give one, two word answers. Uh, what is your favorite food? Oh man, um, it would have to be Caribbean food because that's what I grew up on. Gotcha. Yeah. And what is your favorite heart condition? My favorite heart condition? Yeah. Oh man, that, that's a weird question to ask. I, I, don't, I don't think I would say heart conditions are something to be liked, <laughs> but but uh, what, what I do like to manage is probably heart failure. Uh -huh. um, I just really love to do deal with hemodynamics. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so, you know, it's, it's so interesting to me to, to look at, you know, the feedback loops and, mm -hmm. and pressures and the volumes. And so I, I enjoy hemodynamics. So heart failure is something that I enjoy to manage. Gotcha. Yeah. And what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Well, um, I do a lot of things outside of medicine. One of the things that I'm doing right now is uh, working, on a, uh, working on a civic entrepreneurship project called mm -hmm. FDF. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, uh, what I'm doing is uh, working with uh, young men and women uh, from communities that deal with a lot of gun violence and poverty, mm -hmm. and uh, helping them with economic opportunities. So right now, I'm helping out, helping them out with music, mm -hmm. and giving them um, a platform to be able to monetize on their music. So um, I just love uh, giving back and building other, building people up, and um, uh, basically uh, not. Not knocking down, not knocking down the bridge behind me, but but creating opportunities uh, and blazing paths for other people. So, uh, gotcha. that's my passion. And if anyone wanted to contact you or learn about your uh, FDF, uh, use the FDF project. Yeah, FDF project. Mm -hmm. um, how can they um, get a hold of you or learn about, more about that? 
So you can check us out on fdfproject.com. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually coming out with another website for the, the record label that, that was formed as part of the uh, music platform, which is fdfsound.com. Mm -hmm. Or you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter or uh, Facebook at, at FDF Media or at FDF Sound. Um, and uh, you'll see our, our platforms and um, you can check it out. And, and uh, you know, please, 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 feel free for, please, please feel free to comment. And, and if you want to uh, reach out to us and learn more, uh, we're, we're you know, we're more than um, uh, 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 willing to take any inquiries, okay? Gotcha. And, and I'll put links for all of your social media sites in the description, as well as in the video. I appreciate you. you. Oh, yeah, my Instagram is at, is at uh, BashBMD, um, so, so that's my personal Instagram. Okay, awesome. Dr. Ashby, I appreciate it, man. You're a big inspiration to a lot of us up-and-coming uh, attending sure. physicians. <laughs> yeah. Um, coming on with me today, man, and... Um, uh, thank you, Ming, and congrats on all your success. Thanks for inviting me. I love what you're doing, and, and keep pushing on. All right? All right. Appreciate it. And for everyone else out there, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe, as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.